and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys and of course coming into this weekend we're all arriving here with one simple question how are this Barca team gonna respond to what we saw again in the Champions League it was the same old same old another embarrassment another humiliation in this game we've got to see change it's not about doing it in a week's time it's not about doing it in a month's time or doing it in the summer the change starts now and if we don't see that on Sunday in Kerman's team selection, I'll be very, very disappointed. So without further ado, let's get on to how it should be done. Because kickoff will be coming to us between Barca and Cadiz early there on Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. local time. And here, guys, are the times right around the world so that if you are ready to jump back into the Barcelona stuff, it is there for you. Elsewhere in La Liga this weekend, we'll be playing after both Madrid clubs with Atletico facing a rematch against Levante just a few days after they drop points to them in midweek. That's coming up there on Saturday. And also on the Saturday, Real Valladolid will be facing Real Madrid before on Monday as well. We can't forget about Sevilla. They may have lost in midweek to Dortmund, but they're going to be travelling to Osasuna on Monday night. Because as you can see here, in terms of the La Liga table, Atletico's drop points again in midweek. Have opened things up just a little bit. That gap there at the top, it is closing little by little. Barca now sit nine points behind Atletico, having played now the same amount of games with Real Madrid there, having played one game more. And like I say, Sevilla very much for now at least in the title race but of course coming into this game forget about that forget about all of that stuff it doesn't even really matter here if we come in and win this game because in all honesty a win against Cadiz it's not going to help erase everything that's happened over the past few days and that is why guys I can understand here many of you coming at this game and saying you know what I don't care I know that it hurts and it does hurt to say that but I do feel as though some people are actually clicking that option there because quite simply if you don't care it's going to hurt a bit less. If you didn't care in midweek, the result wouldn't have hurt as much as it did. So I can understand that point of view. But at the same time, we do want a response. And the fact you're tuning into this video, you do care. Deep down, I know that you do care. We all want this team to do well. We all want this team to find something and move forward. And that's what I mean here. It doesn't matter if we come into this game and, you know, put out the same sort of team that played against PSG and we get the win. Who cares? Honestly, who cares? That doesn't really mean anything to me. What I want to see in this game is something here longer term. Something here with the bigger picture in mind. Let's build something. Let's start laying the foundations. I want to see here different players because I tell you what, if Koeman comes into this game and just lines up here with a very similar team that faced PSG, what does that tell everybody? What kind of message does that send out? That you can go out there in a big Champions League game, play like that and then at the weekend, you just keep your place. That would be ridiculous. That would be insanity from Ronald Koeman he has to ring the changes because those who didn't play well, it's very simple. Don't play them. Which is why coming into this game against, let's not forget either, 15th place Cadiz at the camp. Now, this game, even at the worst of times, it shouldn't be causing us a great deal of problems. And that's why there's no excuses whatsoever here for Kuman to really switch things up. So in goal, of course, I don't think we're going to do anything too drastic there. Ter Stegen is going to continue between the sticks. He's going to start in goal. No question about that. At left back, though, for me, there should be a change. Jordi Alba did not play well against PSG. Junior Firpo in the last game that he played actually looked quite a bit improved so you know what give him a start in this game Alba goes to the bench Junior Firpo starts there at left back moving on to centre back again for me you've got to ring the changes Clement Longley did not play well Gerard Piquet did not play well either and went off we don't even know really if he was fully ready to play against Paris Saint-Germain so for me change both of them back in there comes Samuel Mtuti I know there is a risk I'm not saying that Samuel Mtuti is going to be the perfect player right now to play in that area, but I would include him here, and if he doesn't want to trust in Umtiti, then maybe De Jong would have to play at centre-back. I wouldn't play Longley, and I would not play Piquet. Then alongside him, I would definitely bring back in Oscar Mingueza. Play him there in his natural role. When he played off to the right, he was doing well at right-back. He was looking very, very solid. Play him there in his natural centre-back role. He deserves a start, no question about that, until Ronald Araujo can come back in. At right-back, although he had a pretty tough night, we don't really have 
had a lot of choice but to include Serginho Dest who I'm sure coped much much better in this game and he didn't have much protection it has to be said against Kylian Mbappe he did the best that he could on a difficult night for the whole team so Dest there would still keep his place at right back. Into midfield then and exactly the same applies right here. Sergio Busquets did not have a good game against PSG therefore he should take his place on the bench and he should be replaced there by a player who simply had hardly any minutes. He's hardly been trusted at all since he joined the club. Miralem Pjanic should start at the base of that midfield in the deeper role there, replacing Sergio Busquets. Alongside him, I would have Franco de Jong. I would certainly play him there in midfield if you can. Like I say, if you don't trust somebody at centre-back there, you could play de Jong further back, but if possible, play him in midfield. And then to complete the trio, it wouldn't be Pedri for me. Now, that's not punishing there because of a bad game. He didn't have his best game, in fairness, against Paris Saint-Germain. It's not a punishment, though. It's not like the others here. I would simply give Pedri a bit of time away from the starting lineup here. He needs a bit of rest. He doesn't need to be playing every single game from the start and wearing him down and tiring him out. And for that reason, bring in somebody there who is fresh, who is ready, who has got something to prove. Ricky Pooch. He has earned his place in this starting lineup and he should definitely be starting here at the weekend against Cadiz. Now, in terms of the forwards, once again, there's not a great deal that you can do in this area, given the fact that we don't have an awful lot of options at our disposal. So yes, I would continue there to play Antoine Griezmann in this team. I don't think he had the best of games against PSG. He definitely could have scored at least one goal and he didn't. And of course, Messi, he's also going to remain in the team. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see how he plays and how he's feeling really after that defeat. But on the right hand side of our attack, I would make a change. Dembele, again, like many of the players here, didn't have his best night against PSG. Missed, of course, that big chance. For me, Trincao has earned that start. He has been really, really impressive in the minutes that he's been given. He's been scoring goals now. His confidence is really looking up. Play him in this game from the start. And I'm really confident that when he gets in front of goal again, he has the ability to score goals. And I think when you are looking at that team there, guys, that just gives you, doesn't it, a bit of hope. If we were to see that play against Cadiz, it wouldn't really matter what happened out on the field, what sort of performance that we saw. What we would just like to see is a moment there where Koeman is just saying, you know what? I'm calling the shots. I'm going to do this. You didn't play well. You didn't play well. You didn't play well. Go and sit over there. You have to punish the players. If you let them get away with making those kind of performances, they're going to walk all over you. They are going to walk all over you and you cannot have that as the coach of Barca. He has to show here some authority. He has to ring the changes. And let's just hope that we see a youthful look to that team. We see plenty of changes, new faces in the Barca lineup. And hopefully... It will all lead to a positive performance. And so that indeed concludes today's video, guys. No predictions on this occasion. We were focusing today mainly on those feelings and the expectations. But of course, in the future, predictions will very much be returning. And I would also just like to say, later on, over on More Talk FCB, big video coming for you guys. I am going to be giving there my honest thoughts, really stripped back thoughts on the likes of Ter Stegen, PK, Longley, Alba, Busquets, the players there who who've been responsible for our defensive displays in our Champions League humiliations. And I'm just going to be giving you there my really, really honest opinions. That'll be coming up later for you. Thank you indeed for watching here, even though right now I know it's tough. I know that it's not easy. And I really do thank you for still coming back here, watching the videos and getting involved. It means a lot and we will get there in the end. Thank you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. But until next time... As always, Vishka, help us.